This is an example of one type of setup that you could use when teaching the IUD insertion. This is a uh, GYN simulator, a Zoe model, and we are set up in just any typical clinic exam room. This particular one has a window cut out of it in which the observers can go ahead and view the inside the uterus. With this one we have inserted a transparent uterus. Notice that the simulator comes with two types, one with antiverted position and there's also one that has a retroverted position and they can be easily inserted within the model itself, suspended and protected. Students, uh, residents can then practice their bimanual exam, identifying the location of the uterus, and one can also observe the insertion of the IUD in any kind of equipment. Learners, other learners can certainly circle around Zoe, and a faculty member can look over and get an idea if the uh, insertion is at the proper location as well. With this particular model, the skin is fairly fragile. It's important to uh, make sure that one uses either a lukewarm soapy water or one can use a water-based lubricant as well. You can use either a metal or a plastic speculum. We prefer the metal. Uh, it's a little bit easier for insertion and uh, it's nice and stable. Typically a medium size for either one Graves or Peterson is appropriate. Additional things that we have set up within our teaching room, we have um, other equipment uh, for a typical IUD insertion. And um, if someone does not have a Zoe simulator, there are certainly other models that we've used in the past. We have used some homemade models which are demonstrated in our other video. In addition to an exam room such as this, you could certainly do this in a workshop type style, uh, whether it is circular tables or setting up rectangular tables in a U shape in which one instructor can circulate around and be able to really oversee six, eight, ten learners and watch them uh, do that on Zoe simulators or other or homemade models as well. So there are many things that you can do with as far as just the formatting of this particular workshop. For the model itself, uh, we will demonstrate just briefly the quick insertion visualization of the cervix and whether it is using a clinic floor light or whether it is using a uh, pen light or even a flashlight if need be. Um, it is quite easy for one to change out the cervix and the uterus models. Learners can practice their speculum insertions and their faculty supervision, so that's something else that you can give feedback on. And for this particular one, I'm just going to use a little bit of, of warm water for the sake of time and the insertion. One thing about Zoe is that her cervix is fairly superficial. And using the light, one can just visualize the cervix fairly easily in order to be able to perform uh, procedures. And in this case, it's the IUD insertion. While the residents are waiting their turn to work on the Zoe um, gynecological stimulator, one option they can have is to become familiar with the equipment. So notice some various examples of IUDs, just having them get familiar with how to move the slider to secure or unsecure the string. These come with the IUD models and they can certainly practice inserting the IUD to the correct length watching how the phalanges open, watching how to gently move it up into the fundus, and looking carefully at the IUD to make sure that they're in the right position, and the release. For the IUD insertion workshop aspect, um, this can be done whether it's seated in the clinic or certainly, uh, as mentioned previously, in a conference room standing uh, at the side of a table. So initially what we'll want to do is we will have the learner stand and perform a bimanual exam. This particular Zoe model has a retroverted uterus in place as noted. It's helpful to talk through some technique tips on how to determine whether one is antiverted or retroverted and certainly the um, Zoe comes with either one. Once the position of the uterus is clearly identified, uh, the next step would then be insertion of the speculum. We have both 
metal as well as plastic available using a little water-based KY jelly to decrease the trauma on the actual Zoe tissue. Feedback can be given with regard to the speculum insertion techniques. And once the cervix is fully visualized, next giving a little bit of feedback to the learner about sterile exam and use of sterile gloves. Everything is set up on the table, uh, somewhat in the order in which the provider will be going through the steps, and that's helpful to have uh, various glove sizes available. Still have a mix of different learners, most likely. So having all sizes available is helpful prior to the workshop as well. So uh, once we have this point, the next step is to utilize whether it is a betadine solution, whether it's a HIPAA cleanse, the 4x4, and also then the ring forceps to have that available. You would not want to use iodine with the Zoe model, um, but certainly could talk through that step as well. The other thing that could be optional and discussed too, depending on faculty preference, is the use of any type of anesthetic, whether it's injecting the uh, lidocaine as demonstrated in the teaching uh, video, whether it is using a cervical block, any of those are certainly possibilities in which one could practice at this stage of the workshop. Next after that step is the use of the tenaculum. This is something that you can use with the um, GYN simulator model, just carefully doing a tenaculum placement and then sounding the uterus metal sound one could highlight and teach perhaps how to adjust this depending on if one palpated an antiverted or a retroverted uterus and watching the students do this in a sterile manner as well and this is a time when you as a faculty member you can be looking through that window the other learners can be um, talking through that as well instructing their peer and then the learner um, themselves can stand up and actually see what it is, um, the placement, and correlate that with what they're palpating on the other side. So once the sound is fully in place, the next step would then be using the IUD itself. Uh, another thing you can do is you can have someone be the uh, assistant in their nursing role as a role model and um, practice through opening up the IUD. I think it's helpful to have actually the box of an IUD as one of the teaching instruments so that way the students can open that up and get an idea in addition to the IUD itself what else is included within that box. Pointing out that it comes with a patient information booklet, a packet in which the lot number is placed and you can sign your name, the patient can sign their name, that's just another piece of material that you can give them. There's also some information as far as from the provider if the residents that are around want to uh, spend some time looking through this, that can be done as well. It's helpful in addition to have examples of ones that are, are um, packaged completely to have some other ones available at this step so that each one doesn't have to be open for every single resident. Talking through how to make sure that the slider is uh, firmly at the top to be able to make sure that the IUD's arms are positioned horizontally in the proper position, that the string is secure, that the uh, finger is at the correct location. Those are all teaching points in which a faculty can go through as well. And certainly moving back to the model itself, um, it's easy through this to be able to insert the IUD through the model and to be able to visualize on the other side exactly what is going on to talk the learner through opening it up for to the first line for the release of the arms, being able to gently advance that to the fundus and being able to have them actually stand up and take a look and see what that looks like on the other side and then finally to be able to completely uh, release the IUD. We don't recommend the students practicing cutting the strings because otherwise you can't use them again, but certainly talking through the length in which you would want that string to be cut is also helpful to discuss. And certainly the same workshop can um, be, be used for IUD removal and um, very simple to be able to talk them through how to do that too. Finally at the end, uh, one can highlight what to do if there's any bleeding from the tenaculum sites, whether it's application of some Monsell solution and then certainly the removal of the speculum as well.
And then afterwards, what's helpful to go through is what patient instructions would you give this particular person? What are some things that they should be looking for? Uh, when would you want to see them back? And being able to talk through at the end of the workshop some of the um, patient instructions and warning signs in which you would want the provider to go through. Okay.